Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this workshop on ECC and ECP writing, examination for the certificate of competency and examination for the certificate of proficiency in English. My name is Fernando Florking. I'm the Director of Marketing, Communications and Stakeholder Relations. And if you can tell us where you're coming from, where you're joining us from, your country, that would be great. We'll have several uh, tasks to complete and we're covering ECC and ECP writing tasks and the scoring rubrics. We'll look at some samples to analyze um, each of the different types of uh, writing samples for both exams. And we'll you will be evaluating some of those responses and we'll reflect on some implications and how we can help our learners that might be at those same stages. We will share the, the slides whoever, with everyone who um, is subscribed to receive our uh, newsletters and new preparation resources. If you haven't so far, many of you, I know you already received those, but if, you, if not, you can look at this link here, michigan.org slash resources. And there's a newsletter uh, link to, to subscribe to it. I will be sharing some of the writing samples and other materials using a QR code that you can scan. So be, make sure that you have your phone or another device that, that can scan QR codes for that one. And I'll share uh, other activities through another platform. So we'll, I will show you what to do in that each of those cases, but make sure you have another device where you're with the, the same one that you're using at this point, but uh, we'll need you'll need that to access the the writing samples. I will be showing the the samples as well if you you can't access them anyway. Uh, and we'll have a sort of three minute break in between. We'll begin with the ECC part and then a short break, and we'll continue with the ECP um, exam. So let me check if there are any questions so far. Oh, I see that there are several people responding from Greece, from Brazil, from several places in Latin America, Thessaloniki. It's great. I was recently in Athens in Thessaloniki doing some of these presentations. So if you attended those, that's similar to what we did before. But thank you for joining us. This is so many people from um, so many places. So let's get started with the ECC writing section. Everybody is well aware of uh, the task. I don't think we have to go over the task much in this case, but you know, it's for the ECC, test takers have to complete one task in 30 minutes. They can choose one of the possible uh, options that they are provided. They're either giving an email or a letter or an, in an essay. So they have to choose from one of those two tasks. There is no word limit, but they, they need to be very well developed in order to be able to reach the expectations for this B2 level exam. Our writing uh, section for the, for the writing se um, section of the ECC is evaluated by certified raters here that work with our teams um, in Michigan. And here you have an example of a writing prompt. There are two options in this case for test takers to choose from. They can either choose to write an email to the principal of the school that is planning to limit students' internet access during school hours by only allowing them to go online using school computers and not the student's own devices, like phone. He wants to know what students think about the AD. And it's writing an email to the principal. That's the, the purpose of the test, of a, the task and the audience that they have to keep in mind. They're writing a formal email to the principal of their school and they have to provide sufficient reasons to support their ideas and to be convincing in, in that argument. They can start their email, dear Principal Beller. Or the other option is to write an essay. They can 
uh, talk about when traveling to a new place, it's better to take a tour with a guide rather than exploring the area by yourself. Again, in this case, they have to write uh, an essay giving their opinions, but that statement with sufficient reasons and um, sufficient development examples that can support their, their opinion. Um, as a reminder, ECC is aimed at the B2 level of the Common European Framework of References. And this is a description here of a Canada statements that uh, describe the expectations of the C at the B2 level. Test takers or any user of the language at this level, not just test takers, obviously, they can produce clear, detailed texts on a variety of subjects, synthesizing and evaluating information and arguments. They can give clear, detailed descriptions of real or imaginary events and experiences, marking relationships between ideas in clear, connected text, following established conventions of the general concern. They can give clear, detailed descriptions of a variety of top subjects. They can produce an essay or report which develops an argument systematically with appropriate highlighting of significant points and relevant supporting detail, evaluating different ideas or solutions to a problem, produce an essay or report, which develops an argument given reasons in support of or against a particular point of view, and explaining the advantages and disadvantages of various options. As you can see, there are several things that are from these descriptors that are reflected in the kinds of tasks that are expected of test takers at the um, for the ECC, it's obviously going to be reflected of these expectations. The, the tasks are eliciting this type of response that provides advantages and disadvantages of the options. They have to provide uh, detailed descriptions, in sufficient detail on a variety of topics, following established conventions of the general concerns. This is a, basically a, a reminder about the the kind of uh, language, the organization, the content, the type of tasks that are eliciting this language uh, to make sure that we're really certifying learners at the B2 level. So let's give you a little task to get started. Um, either choose the email or the, the essay, and I will give you one minute to write a brief outline for one of the tasks. Put yourself in the place of, uh, of your students, and let's spend one minute to just write, just one minute, not more than that. Let me start my timer. Ready? Let's go. One minute. Okay, I was looking at some of your questions. Thanks for all the messages. Hi, nice to see you here, Giovanna as well. Great, um, lots of familiar faces. So did you have time to write a few ideas about the one of the two tasks? Um, one minute is not a lot, but it can give you enough time to at least plan for your the, the organization, the kind of ideas, how you're going to put together two these two ideas to support part of your essay and some other ideas to support your the other argument or however you're going to organize. I saw that there were several questions about the number of words that are necessary. The rubric, we'll see that in a minute. Um, 
it's not requiring a specific number of words and and just counting the number of words will not help students in any way so don't encourage them to to write a certain number of words to decide whether they, it's a good essay or a good response for an ECC task. We'll look at the rubrics in a minute. Okay, so this is, um, you can have access to the, the rubrics and the, this document on our website. The rubrics and the writing rating scale consists of four main categories that trained raters use to um, evaluate responses. The four categories are content and development, organization and connection of ideas, linguistic range and control, and the communicative effect. Content and development is basically how relevant the content is to the task. Are they answering the prompt? Are they, uh, what, what kind of ideas are they sharing? Or is it something generic that is not really addressing the specific topic? Is there enough information to support their arguments? Um, you can see the, the different levels of performance under content and development from below standard when there is little or no development of the argument, the content is irrelevant or mainly taken from the prompt up to richly developing an argument with original supporting ideas. The second category is organization and connection of ideas. How well are those ideas organized, connected, linked? How is the language used to, what kind of language is used to, to link those ideas? And again, you can see from minimal or no organization with connectors used inappropriately, sometimes they're not really contributing to, to a logical idea, um, logical organization of those ideas, up to all the way to very smooth, effective arrangement and connection to ideas using a variety of cohesive devices that are used effectively, not just mechanically. First of all, or on the one hand, and on the second hand, there might be, we'll see some examples how those uh, connecting devices might be used mechanically and they're not really contributing to, to the appropriate organization of the essay. The next category is the linguistic range and control. It's the variety and precision of grammar and vocabulary. To what extent language, grammar, um, and vocabulary Grammar structures are used appropriately, correctly, um, accurately, but also to what extent uh, and a more advanced range of structures are being used appropriately and consistently throughout the, the whole essay? Or is it basically simple grammar structures that are used throughout with frequent errors or some errors in some areas or some attempts to, to use more complex structures? The same about the, the vocabulary range that is used. Does the test taker, as you can see in the higher categories, um, do they attempt to use more sophisticated vocabulary, more formal vocabulary, rather than frequently used words in general? So we're evaluating all of that. And the communicative effect is more related to the, the engagement with the audience and understanding who they are writing for, how their purpose in they're conveying ideas to a specific audience. The principle of the school that they're writing to is the uh, email appropriately addressed to that particular person in that formal context. And as you can see, the there is no reference to the number of words uh, that are necessary to respond to a prompt. It's really about the quality of the language used, the, the amount of information, the content that is um, included in that um, particular response, language, how it's organized, how it addresses the prompt, and how it impacts the reader. So let's look at, these are the main categories. How, how well, how aware are your students uh, of the rubrics? Do you share the rubrics or do you discuss some of these areas with your students? They might not be kind of able to understand what our more linguistic terms or more testing uh, jargon might be, it's not something that they might be trained to understand, but you can probably um, help them understand some of the, those ideas and to make sure that they know these four different categories and they're more familiar with the way they're going to be evaluated and how relevant their content is going to be, the development needs to be sufficient to 
kind of support an argument? Do they have in, enough supporting details, examples, experiences? How, to what extent do they rely on the language mentioned in the prompt in the what the, the exam task provides? If they're basically transcribing content from the prompt, that's not going to help them much. They have to elaborate and use more authentic and original content that they, they can come up with in order to respond to their um, writing task to this task. The same about organization and connection of ideas help them understand how they can be show uh, a good and effective organization of ideas and the kind of transition markers, the expressions that they can use to connect sentences, to connect paragraphs, to organize the entire essay or the, the whole response to will it read smoothly from the beginning until the end? Or is it kind of awkward the way ideas are organized? Are these ideas really supporting the main idea explained in, in that particular paragraph? Help them understand all that. The same about the language and the communicative effect. So let's look at some responses. You can see um, a couple of responses here. If you can scan this uh, QR code, or go to that link, you will see, have access to a few samples that we'll analyze and I will wait until everybody has accessed it. So it's bit.ly slash ECCE hyphen samples. Okay. And I'll be sharing the, the samples for everybody to see as well. So we'll get started with the first one. So what do you think of this one? I will start um, polls. This is sample one email. There's a poll that I doubt. We saw the B2 level expectations and the rubrics. What do you think of this email? Does it meet the CFR requirements for the B2 level and ECC expectations or not? Let's see your responses and then we can analyze it together. So you can access the, Q, the samples through that QR code or the link that I shared, but we will be looking at those same samples here. So if you couldn't, for some reason, you can follow here. Okay, let's give you a couple more seconds. There are a few more responses, but the great majority of you think that it meets the requirements for B2 and C ECC. And that's true. It does. Uh, so content is appropriate, gender is appropriate, the format for an email to the principal of the school is appropriate. It begins as a dear Principal Beller, as a student myself. Uh, at the end, he says, he or she says, you should reconsider this idea. So it's very well uh, addressed to, to that particular person, the principal of the school, the content is a property. It's very well developed. The, the opinion is stated in the first paragraph. Then acknowledges other opinions uh, about the same topic, but provides very good examples to support their own opinion, and which is restated in the conclusion. The organization is clear, effective. The ideas flow easily. There are very well used uh, linking expressions as well. There's and proper range of grammar and vocabulary that are used both accurately and, and appropriately within this context. So it is um, a satisfactory um, response in this case. This definitely would be a pass. We have another one. This is a different sample. I'll post another poll to get your 
responses and see how you're doing. And this is sample to essay. It should be fast. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing how fast you respond to. <laughs> yeah, so you clearly get the picture, right? <laughs> The great majority of you, let's end it here, think that it's uh, not meeting the expectations for ECC and B2 level. Let's see. A lot of irrelevant content, uh, language that is mainly borrowed from the prompt. First two paragraphs, people start traveling from the ancient years. In our days, people travel with friends alone. This is not really what you're supposed to be writing about. Today, traveling is a very popular and training activity. You can visit places you want with a group. This is not going anywhere. So you see the, the limited uh, development, kind of irrelevant content. There's only one paragraph or part of a paragraph that refers to the specific question in the prompt with very limited support. There are some linking expressions, in my opinion, to sum up, um, that kind of show a general idea, but they're main, basically mechanically used. The content is not cohesive throughout, and there are frequent grammar uh, and vocabulary errors. So this is definitely not um, meeting the expectations for this level or ECC. It's not passing. The next stage for this section of the test of a workshop and, and webinar, you will have access to these three. You don't have to read them here. Don't worry. You will have to access to these three essays, and I will give you a little time to read all of them. I will uh, give you a couple of minutes to read each of them here with a, one single poll for all three of them. So I'm not changing that poll for each of the different, it will be one poll with three questions for you to respond so you can have some time to read them. Um, and I will also share another link so that you can um, have access to those samples as well. Again, the descriptions of uh, can-do statements for the B2 level, for this high intermediate level of proficiency, mostly for writing in this case, it's, it's exactly the same that I showed before. So we'll have four minutes overall, kind of one minute per essay. You're doing so well that you can probably manage um, to rate them in one minute or a little more than a minute. Uh, and just the main the main decision you have to make is whether they're meeting these expectations for the B2 level and for ECC or not. Do they pass or fail? This is the link where you can access the three samples, either through the link or the QR code. In it, but then I will start sh showing the um, each sample. Okay, so I'll spend a minute, a little over a minute on this one. Take your time, don't all right. We still have time. Okay, this is one minute for this one. I will share the link again 
some people can access it and then share the second and third samples. Okay, so the next one, essay number two is this one, Jenny. About one more minute to read this one. And number three, this is the third one we're going to look at now. Give you one more minute to read this. Okay, so how are we doing? Got a lot of your responses so far on that poll. So I'll give you, there are some people who are, who are still responding. Okay. Okay. So, or let's see. Let's go to John again. That's essay number one. Um, so far, from what I see from your responses, eighty-six percent of all participants here say that this is not meeting the expectations and should not pass. Let's see. Some content, content development, some development, but it's not probably enough. Very few details. There is some attempt to paragraph organization, some transition markers that are used, but again, this is in one hand. On the other hand, um, and at the end, I like his conclusion. He's, yeah, it was John. This is it. So, traveling alone, it's not so bad, but with your friends and your family, it's not like the others. I don't know what all that means in some way, but um, yeah, there are several grammar and vocabulary errors. Uh, there is not, and it's not easy to follow the, the argument, argumentation process in this case, and not enough information that is provided to, to provide convincing arguments in this case. So this is definitely an essay that uh, needs some work. It's not at that level, at the ECC or B2 level yet. So I agree with the 80% of you that said that this is not at the level. Let's see the next one. Um, Jenny, you said, oh, this is interesting. 62% uh, said that this meets the requirements and should pass ECC. And 38% said that it doesn't meet the requirements and shouldn't pass. Let's see. Content development. There is a proper development with 
mostly relevant uh, details. Their ideas are, there's effective connection of ideas. There are good, um, there's good use of connectors and linking transitions, expressions throughout. There's good control of most basic and some complex structures. There are some er errors, um, but don't interfere with the general comprehension of a whole message. And the register is appropriate. There's a, some sense of audience here. So it, this one is, I would have to agree with those, the 63% that thought that this um, is meeting the B2 requirements and ECC expectations. So this one, yeah, that was a, a pass. And the third essay that you were reading, that was, who was this one? Alex. Um, eighty-eight percent of the participants think that this is meeting those expectations. Let's see. Rich development, a variety of cohesive devices used appropriately, broad range of grammar vocabulary used accurately, effective use of um, register and sense of audience. Yeah, very good vocabulary overall. In the light of this evidence, the obvious conclusion to be thrown to be drawn is that, that like how how he ended. So yeah, this was a, a really good uh, response to an ECC. So how are we doing so far? Ready for some more? We can look at some emails. Let's see. Again, uh, here is the task, the principal of a school planning to limit students' internet access during school hours by only allowing them to go online using school computers and not students' own devices. You can imagine the chaos that that will create at school, right? And I'm sure everybody has an opinion about this. And he wants to know what students think about the idea. So writing an email to the principal, explaining the opinion with reasons to support those ideas and starting the year principal bell. You have a list of um, B2 requirements overall. We'll do the same four minutes approximately for to read three emails and just decide whether the, this meets the B2 level expectations and ECC requirements or not. So here's a link with these three samples. We have 12 seconds to access this one. And I will start sharing. These are the three samples, and I'll give you And this one you won't need a full minute.
Okay, I will move on to the next one. So I have Let's we'll see that responses to the poll. Oh, start it again. Are we done with these ones? I'll keep the poll open a little bit longer, but let's start looking at these three samples. So this is the first one. Uh, Frank, how do you think Frank did? The audience, 96% of the audience think that this is not meeting the expectations of ECC or B2 level. Um, right. This is not making it in any of the categories. Uh, there's not enough content development. The organization is, as you see, on the other hand, it begins. Um, that's basically the main paragraph begins with, on the other hand, in my opinion, I think it will turn out better for them. And at the end, that they might like the idea, all in all. So you see them some mechanical use of uh, linking expressions here, but there's no content. It's very, very limited development here. There's very even limited language being used and no communicative effect. So definitely not um, passing. And I'm showing this here because if you can if you think that, that you're expecting that student to be uh, at the B2 level, but he's probably far from the B2 level at this point. It's even most likely at the A2 level than B2 level. So the, that student was not ready to take this exam. The second sample here Laura uh, what's it? This was interesting. 60% of you said that she is meeting the requirements. 40% think that she is not. Let's let's see. Content. There's limited development. 
there's mostly content bar borrowed from the prompt. Um, on the one hand, limiting the students' internet access during school hours by only allowing them to go online using school computers, like all that beginning of a second paragraph, that's language taken directly from the prompt. There is very little development on her own and um, very original content. It can also make them to wait and beg to use the school computers to go online. However, some students might get angry and do bad things if a teacher does not let them use the school computer. So see that there's some mechanical use of transitional expressions. There's a boilerplate introduction and conclusion. I'm writing to express my ideas about your plan. This can be anything, filling the blank with any ending for that. And all in all, I think that the idea is very smart and then very positive. That does not, does not really support everything that um, Laura is trying to say or, you know, in an organized and cohesive way. There is some control of some grammar, some vocabulary, uh, but there are errors as well, uh, frequent errors, and there is no clear awareness of an audience or for purpose. So this is not meeting those expectations for the B2 level or ECC. This is not a passing uh, composition, email in this case. Um, and what about the third? This is Lindsay's response. 96% of the audience felt that um, she should pass and she meets the B2 expectations. Let's see. There's very appropriate content. This was very well written, very well developed. The organization is cohesive, coherent. There's very use, very uh, efficient use of all those um, transition markers begin with uh, the result in, in the middle of the paragraphs as well. Um, there's a wider range of grammar, vocabulary, uh, both used appropriately throughout and with a very clear purpose, very sense, uh, effective sense of audience. The purpose of this email is to express my views and so, 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 so. I'm in favor of your plan, like addressing Principal Ballard directly. And I believe it will be really effective for many reasons. That concludes in, in a similar way. So it's very engaging to the person who's reading this, definitely passing. So moving on to something, uh, how do, how many of these students that you saw here, Frank, Laura, Lindsay, do you have any Franks or Laura's or Lindsay's in your classes? Uh, when you get a, an email or an essay like the ones that you saw here, what do you do with them? How do you share feedback with them? Um, let, I'm going to share another platform in a minute so that you can provide feedback on them, but and we'll spend about three minutes going, if you have access to those uh, samples, if not, I can go back to them uh, while I give you access to this other platform, but I'll share show the three samples again. Uh, what kind of feedback would you give to them? How would you encourage them to continue developing? Which skills, what areas do you think they have to work on? So this is the um, Menti. If you've used it, it's another platform mainly to share content and ideas together. You can either access it through this QR code or go to menti.com and use this code. And I will have to change my, once you're done here, I will show the, um, open it here and give you a time. To access it. That should be fine. 
So mm -hmm. let me change my screen. This other screen. Do you have any? Great, right, so several good ideas. Let's see, Laura. Right. Okay, there are several suggestions, mostly paraphrasing, improved vocabulary, more descriptive, focus on vocabulary and language, better development, add more examples, state messages more clearly, more original ideas. Okay, that's a lot. Any recommendations for Lindsay? It's the third one. Because of passing, is there anything else that she can still improve? Yep. Very positive feedback. Great job so far. <laughs> okay. Okay, mostly positive feedback. Okay. Good. So... The, we're going to, are there any special questions or anything that are pending? We're going to have a short break, about three minutes. I'm still going to be here 
uh, responding to your questions in the middle. So far, and we'll continue with ACP samples to analyze. So I'll see you in a minute and start counting three minutes now to begin with the ECP session. Thank you. Ready to continue? Give you a minute to come back. I was reading some of the questions that um, some of you had posted. Some were um, let's see. A desk that was marked. Amalia was asking about an essay that was marked uh, as off topic, so um, she didn't give any grades. But um. You can still evaluate their language, their content, their development, the organization, how uh, everything is organized, even though it might not be uh, on topic. So the, the, the test taker, especially to give them feedback, how they can um, learn a little more from, from that experience. Um,
there's a question about test takers with dyslexia. Test takers with any kind of, uh, that require any special accommodations can look at our website and, and request accommodations. Our customer service team, our operations team will be addressing those with a, a proper documentation that needs to be submitted with that request. But we have different ways how um, different accommodations might be provided for students that require them. So make sure to check our policies and the section on accommodations. Um, there is a question from Julie about explaining why students should avoid using some standard phrases in order to gain some time in 30 minutes. Right, so it's not easy to to remember everything they have to say and that they might learn cert certain expressions or certain, that's that's totally fine. But uh, they, the responses that we're evaluating need to be properly developed. It's not something that is canned or some boilerplate that they can use for any single uh, response they can start or finish in the same way. It has to be an appropriate response to demonstrate their command of English. It's not how, they're not demonstrating how well they memorized fixed, um, beginnings or endings or expressions that can be used. Obviously, that they need to learn how to use those linking expressions to start paragraphs. Those are typically fine, but it has to contribute to the overall organization of the, the essay or email or the response. It's not something that is just used mechanically to begin a paragraph, in, to begin the first paragraph uh, on the one hand and the second one. Just that will not be enough to provide a, a satisfactory response. Um, okay, there was, I'll see if we can respond to the rest of the questions later. So let's go back to um, the presentation. To, then, and continue with the ECP writing section. Uh, again, I'm sure that all of you are familiar if you're here, it's because you already know, uh, you're familiar with ECC and ECP, in this case, ECP, the C2 level exam. In this case, test takers have 45 minutes to complete one task. There, they have two options to choose from. They can either they can get an article or a proposal as one of the options, or they will have an essay as an as the other option to choose from. There's no word limit to complete the task, but responses should obviously be uh, fully developed and detailed enough to be able to elaborate on a certain um, multiple points of view and providing sufficient reasons and examples to support their opinions. There are three sources that are provided in the ECP writing prompt, and at least one of those must be smoothly incorporated into their response. It has to be supporting the answer that the test taker is providing. And again, um, the writing section is evaluated by trained certified writers. So this is one possible um, prompt where the test takers have the choice between an article or an essay. The three sources apply to the same, <coughs> excuse me, uh, are the same for the, the two uh, prompts. In the first case, they have an article. The principal at your school plans to require students to take a course in soft skills, like leadership, teamwork, communication, in order to graduate. Some teachers and students are excited about this idea, but others are not write an opinion article for the school newspaper and the effects of requiring students to take such a course and include at least one piece of information given above to support your response. So you have the context uh, about this particular situation. Some people agree with it, others don't. You have to write an opinion article. You have to provide your opinion clearly. Um, the audience is the school newspaper, so it has to be a formal article for the school newspaper on the effects of requiring students to take such a course and incorporating at least one of those 
uh, three resources in as part of the, your response. The other topic is an essay. Many employers are starting to consider qualities other than directly related education or work experience when making decisions about whom to hire. What positive and negative effects do you think this might have? Write an, an essay addressing the topic, give your opinion on it, including at least one piece of information given above to support your response. So again, you have the context, the main topic that is being uh, addressed in this case. You have a question, what positive and negative effects do you think this might have? You have to cover positive effects of this, this uh, decision and negative effects. Uh, addressing right in this, addressing this the topic, giving your opinion, including at least one of those sources. One. Uh, and the sources are top four in-demand soft skills from a recent online article are cre creativity, collaboration, critical thinking, and flexibility. Or the second one, Nicole Jones, a human resources manager, says we find that certain skills like organization and creativity are difficult to measure effectively. And the third piece of information is a survey, market research survey saying that 63% of young adults who say their leaderships are not being, skills are not being fully developed. Um, so you see pieces of information that are supporting different aspects of that, the, the topics mentioned here. And you have to know how to use them and how to, which of those will support the opinions that you will provide on your uh, written response. So looking at, this is another example, a proposal and an essay in this case. The proposal, the company you work for wants employees to be more efficient with their time and is planning to require all communication be done over email instead of in meetings. Would that be great? Some employees are concerned about this idea. Write a proposal to the company president evaluating the different courses of action and explain what you think you should be done. Include at least one piece of information given above to support your response. So this is a different type of task. You have to write a proposal. It's a formal proposal to the president of your company. Uh, evaluating different courses of action. So discuss the different alternatives that are being considered and provide your opinion on what should be done, including at least one piece of evidence. And the essay on um, on this topic. Some people believe that being very direct and honest is the best way to communicate. What positive and negative effects might this have? Write an essay addressing this topic and give your opinion about it, including at least one piece of information given above to support your response. So this is a slightly different topic. Being very direct and honest as the best way to communicate. What positive and negative effects might this have? So writing an essay with those two areas on being um, direct and honest in your communications and your opinion. What do you think about this? With those, and you can re uh, read the different sources of information that you have here from a recent study, from a news report, and from a psychology professor. Again, to look at the C2 level expectations of the common European framework, the level that ECP is aiming at, you can see what is expected at this level. These are um, high advanced level of proficiency test takers or users of the language that can produce clear, smoothly flowing, complex texts in an appropriate and effective style logical structure, which helps the reader and identify significant points. Can relate clear, smoothly flowing and engaging stories and descriptions. Uh, produce clear, smoothly flowing, complex reports, articles, essays, which present a case, give critical appreciation of proposals or literary works. Effective logical structure, which helps the reader identify significant points. Set out multiple perspectives on complex academic and professional topics, clearly distinguishing their own ideas and opinions from those in the sources, which is something referring to the sources that were included in the prompts at this point. So this is um, 
again, a very efficient, highly um, advanced level of proficiency in, term, in their written language that can obviously um, communicate ideas in almost any context in academic, professional settings um, with native speakers of the language in any advanced context that requires excellent command of the language. This, so we have these two samples um, we talked about. These are the principal in the school. These are prompts that you will see for the different uh, samples now. The article about the soft skills courses, the essay about using qualities other than directly related education or work experience when making decisions about hiring, uh, the company that wants to shift all communications to emails instead of meetings, and an essay about being direct and honest as the best way to communicate. So in this case, this is for this particular um, prompt. I. Uh, started working on an on an outline if I were going to be working on this uh, about email communications the for the proposal um what do you think is this a good outline to, to, I didn't spend too much time I was wanted to reflect what I would do as a test taker would this be enough to develop a full article? There are different things that we can comment on, and I'm sure you would give me a lot of feedback in terms of what I can do better in that case. Uh, it's definitely not enough. But um, something that I thought we could do as, a, as an option is when they start working on, on the, at the beginning of these stages, when they're be, uh, developing ideas that are going to help them organize, kind of develop their essays and organize them, their responses more efficiently, um, obviously encourage them to spend a couple of minutes to brainstorm, to write an outline, to brief, briefly discuss, think about the main ideas that they're going to use in the different sections of their written response. But something to help them uh, at this stage, we can give them a kind of checklist, something as simple as this one, to for them to evaluate by themselves, is this enough? Is this going to provide sufficient development or ideas for kind of a well-supported essay, do I need additional points? Are all these ideas that I mentioned here very quickly relevant to that main idea, like the advantages or disadvantages of the positive or negative sides or whatever aspect of the development of that essay? And are they would they be coherently organized if I put these ideas together there? Um, are they all related to the prompt? Are they answering the prompt, the, the specific question that is in the prompt, which is something that students really need to pay attention to. And are those ideas within each paragraph, are all, all of them relevant to the main idea of that paragraph? Do I need more pros and cons of the other option, like keeping meetings or anything? <coughs> Do I want to evaluate the pros and cons of the other alternative as well? Can I use sources uh, more than just one source? Is there anything that helps my opinion? It's not just like forcing one of those pieces of information into my essay to have a longer uh, development. They have to be uh, well used. Well, uh, the content that that source of information provides has to be relevant to what I'm trying to explain in my point of view in that particular section of my response. So that was just an idea to see if you can think it, it helps. And here is the rubric, the rating scale for the writing section of ECPE. It has four categories as well, task completion, development, language, and authorial voice. Task completion includes, look at the ranges from bottom to the top responses. Response addresses the prompt, the specific 
topic of a, that was, is mentioned in, in the prompt and fulfills all of the task requirements, integrating at least one of the provided sources of information into the response. Smoothly integrating in that. So it's basically referring to the, the content of the prompt. What is the question that is being asked? Is the essay or the response in general, is it responding to that particular prompt or is it a generic response on communication in general or um, soft skills or studying at a, in high school or hiring? Uh, it has to be very directly related to the specific prompt. The development refers to the content, the, the amount of detailed information that is provided in order to support arguments, whether the arguments are clearly explained, the opinions are uh, clearly supported with enough organization and with cohesive and coherently organized um, ideas throughout the, the whole written response. Language refers to the uh, kind of structures, the grammar and vocabulary, how sophisticated vocabulary it might be used, how what percentage or what kind of uh, grammar structures are being used overall, if, is it mostly showing control of simple grammar and um, structures, or is the test taker also uh, able to show use of more complex structures effectively, accurately throughout the, the response. And authorial voice, whether the content is original, whether the response engages the reader, whether it's it's showing that they understand the how the context of that response addresses the needs of a, the specific audience, the re reader, and with relevant original content. Again, as what we were discussing with um, about ECC, the, it's important to share information and, uh, with, with test takers uh, for them to understand the rubrics and what they need to do in order to meet the expectations for the written response when they're taking the test. And the more they practice evaluating their own samples of performance or um, their peers, classmates, based on these ideas, and these are just general ideas that they can use in, in that respect, they will be more efficient in, in, in writing their own responses when they take the test. So let's take a look at a couple of responses. Again, here is the link to these three responses. I'll give you a minute to scan the QR code or go to the link bit.ly ly slash ecpe underscore samples. Ready. We'll go with ECP sample one article, and I will post ECP sample one. Okay, did you have oh, or, or people coming in?
Okay, are you ready? I'll keep the poll open, but so far we have kind of 50% of the people saying that this meets the ECP expectations, C2 requirements, and like slightly 53% say yes, 47% at this point say no. Let's see, this is very evenly divided. Okay, so multiple viewpoints. This is mostly well supported. There's a proper and effective logical structure of the whole response, the article. It fulfills the task requirements. Um, there's control of simple and some complex structures. Vocabulary is appropriate. The response is original. The content is relevant and engaging. So this is passing. Um, I hope this is enough information for those who thought it would not be sufficient. It's not absolutely perfect. There are some things that this test taker would need to work on in some way, but it does meet the minimum requirements to, to pass. Second one is a proposal. Let me show you. The all for the proposal. Okay, some responses are coming in. The same opinions are not divided. There was a question about the previous one, whether it was a pass or low pass. We're not getting into all those details. We're basically trying to see if they're, <clears throat> if the responses are meeting the expectations of the C2 level. And that's why it's a, a the CFR descriptors are such a great um, tool in this case to help us understand and help students really understand whether they are at this level or not. The um, there might be differences in terms of how well developed and how uh, high in terms of the passing levels this might be, but the previous one was meeting some basic requirements to pass, and uh, it's definitely not a high pass. Okay, so is everybody ready with this proposal? See, the majority of you have responded, and the majority say that this is not meeting the expectations for ECP and C2. 
Let's see. This is a very good sample to look to discuss. To begin with, there's limited development overall. As you can see, even from just without even reading it, you can see um, how well you can easily understand how much development um, is included here. Languages, there are a lot of languages taken from the prompt. Um, like look at um, the aim of this proposal is to present to you the different courses of action and what I believe should be done regarding your to your plan to name all communication to make all communication via email instead of meetings. That's mostly language and kind of an inter typical introduction, but that's not much original language there are content. On the one hand, making all communication via email instead of meetings would make communication way faster than sitting in a meeting for hours on end, because email can be sent to the whole company with one go. 2018 news report has stated that 205 billion emails are sent per day worldwide. This explains the eff efficacy, efficiency, efficacy of using email when communicating with others. So this is, I'm not this clear uh, in terms of what he is trying to say. Um, the beginning is taken from the prompt, then 205 billion emails are sent per day worldwide explaining how efficient uh, emails might be. The total number of emails doesn't mean sent worldwide, doesn't mean that those are efficient ways of communicating ideas. It's just the number of emails that are sent out. So, and send, sending even more emails might not necessarily contribute to solving the, the problem. So it's not really that well um, developed and the source is not really, it's not clear how that using that information, um, the source is really contributing to supporting that idea. Integrates one source, but it's not relevant to the argument. There's lack of control of simple and complex structures. It's mostly simple vocabulary, uh, not much original. So this is not meeting the expectations of uh, ECP or C2 level, definitely. And this is the third example. Let's go back, launch another prompt. Right, and there are a few more responses that should be coming in. I'll wait a few more minutes. So there was a question in the meantime about task completion and whether the prompt is properly addressed, but the, they didn't include um, one of the sources as part of the response, whether that means it will not be um, given full credit for, for the response, even though the essay might be properly developed. That will not get, in terms of task completion, that will not be um, meeting the expectations because the sources are provided to at least make sure that they're using one. They can use more, and if using more contributes to the development, that's totally fine. But minimally, to use to make sure that they, they meet the task requirement um, section of the rubric, they have to include not only developing original content and, and answering the prompt specifically, 
the topic that the prompt is asking about, but also using at least one, one source. Okay, are you ready with this one? I see that the great majority responded this sample is meeting the expectations <clears throat> of an ECC and C2 level. So there are multiple viewpoints. It's well supported, and organized, fulfills the task requirements, definitely. Um, there's control of simple and most complex structures. Vocabulary is appropriate. Um, some sophisticated vocabulary is used, and there's original and engaging content. So this is definitely um, passing composition. Let's move on to the next <clears throat> um, workshop section of a, in this case, about ECP. You will have four samples to read. Um, article, an essay, a proposal, and another essay. <clears throat> I will launch the remember whether they're meeting the C2 expectations. These are the prompts. You gotta get screenshots or um, remember those. We saw them and this is the description of the C2 level in terms of general expectations, multiple perspectives, complex academic and personal topics, including sources, presenting a case. Okay, so this is the link where you can access the different samples, those four responses. I will launch another poll. And I will start showing each of those samples, just in case. So I'll keep this kind of a minute and a half on each of these ones for you to read and move on to the next one.
I'll show each of these for a minute to give you a little more time. There are some people who don't have access to the link. And the poll is still open for these different samples. Okay, I'll stop this one and share the next one. <laughs> We're looking at sample three, Alice. Okay, and I'll share the last one. Um, sample, fourth sample. Poll is still open. <clears throat> There's one poll with four responses to these four samples. Okay, a few more seconds, and then we can start looking at the responses. There are very interesting patterns in your responses. Okay, so let me go back. In case you needed the link again, um, here it is for these last four 
samples, you can either use the link or the QR code. Well, let's look at the, the poll is still open. Okay. <clears throat> Mary's response. From the responses uh, through the poll, I see that most of you responded already and 82% say that it's not meeting the expectations for ECP and B and C2. So the task completion, partially completed to some extent. It does respond to the question. The school newspaper would like to express my opinion about the principal's plans. There are two sources that are used, but not that accurately. Um, there are some ideas uh, that are interesting and relevant that partially supporting the, the main topic. Other ideas are not as clear. Like look at this section on the other hand, the exist people that find these courses not very interesting and a bit difficult to teach them at the kids due to, what does it say, write that? I also um, read a speech of Nicole Jones, who is the human resources manager and said, being realized all these certain scale of organizations and creativity should taught them correctly. So you, you see the difficulties here and it doesn't make these, they might have to measure effective. That's not really what the Nicole Jones said and it's not really used properly in that case. Um, there are frequent errors in simple and uh, more even more complex structures, mostly simple vocabulary, their language, the content is not original, there's little engagement throughout. So this is definitely not, not passing. I agree with that. Um, your overall assessment. Next example, this was from Paul. Does it meet the expectations for C2 and ECP? It uses, um, it responds to the specific prompt, to the specific topic mentioned in the prompt. Uh, there are two sources that are used in the throughout. You can look, find them there. Uh, and they're well used. Uh, where is it here? To finish with a recent study reveals that one out of every five project is unsuccessful due to poor communication. This is probably, so he paraphrases and explains why this is relevant to the main argument that he's trying to make in that case. So that's well an example of a, one of those sources that is well integrated. The other one is mentioned in the other case, the psychology professor, professor um, as well. So language is, is appropriate for, for this level as well. Their content is original, it's engaging. This is passing composition. And in your case, 70% of all of the audience said that this was meeting these requirements and passing. So third example, Alice, she wrote a proposal. And there were several questions about proposals uh, that I heard either in previous webinars or in-person workshops or today during this webinar in particular. The, the the formats for the different types of responses might will obviously be slightly different in some way, but there is no formal requirement in terms of what they need to do in order to actually meet the requirements of the proposal. The requirements under task um, completion are the same that we saw in the rubric. It's basically addressing the, the topic of a specific topic of the prompt, using the sources. It has to have a general look, but whether they have uh, blank lines in between, a title or not, a sections identified by a subtitle, that's all optional. It might contribute to that general idea. It might help, but it's not a formal requirement for each of those par parts. Um, in, in terms of content, there's detailed specific um, content responding to the specific prompt. Sources are used, well-supported, and logically organized development 
flexible and mostly accurate use of grammar and vocabulary. And it's a very engaging response. This is a passing composition and your responses, 76% uh, said that this was passing as well. Totally agree. And the last one we have here, we have Tom with kind of very limited development, as you can see. Most of you, 85%, think that this is not passing and not meeting this the C2 requirements of the CEFR or the expectations for ECP. I totally agree. It's a very generic response. Uh, one of the sources is used, but there's content, like you see the longest paragraph, the one in the middle, is mostly content from borrowed from the prompt. On the one hand, as it is known, being honest is the key to a better and easier communication among people, according to a research study. Moreover, as a psychology professor explains, more than half of the messages communicate. There is not a clear message here. Um, sometimes honesty is considered a bad trait in someone's characteristics. It's mostly deep by people who want to hide something. I don't know what what um, the real opinion is in this case, but it's very limited in terms of development. The language has uh, some languages used accurately, some control of some basic structures, but there's limited language and limited uh, complex language. So this is <clears throat> definitely needs more work. Thanks for your responses. You're mostly on track in terms of what we are expecting from students. So giving students feedback, let's take a little bit um, of time to look at these four examples, these students, and what kind of recommendations we can make. I see. Um, these were the four articles. I can, you can go to this other mentee now. This will have some questions about feedback on these particular test takers and questions about overall finishing this webinar in particular. Well, while you're doing that, I will try to Answer some of your questions as well. I see some of you. So working on more sophisticated vocabulary, more accurate language, sentence structure. Okay, can be more specific in terms of what kind of structures I should be working on. What should I review? What kind of language should I need to um, see how to improve? 
great. These are good suggestions. Thank you. More vocabulary. So let's see what recommendations you have for Paul. Yeah, at the ECP level, it's always important to to increase your level of vocabulary, to keep developing vocabulary and your active vocabulary, how you can integrate more sophisticated <clears throat> language vocabulary, more complex structures into your own um, written proficiency. Mm-hmm. And if you haven't uh, accessed the Menti, this platform, you can just, as it says at the top of the slide, go to menti.com and use that code so you can access this platform and add com comments to the different um, slides, the comments about or on, on feedback on each of the four cases that we just discussed. Great, good ideas, more. C2 level grammar structures are needed and more sophisticated. Well, that's a perfect summary. Great. Let's look at examples for recommendations for Alice. Let's see what you what you have. And I'll answer the rest of your questions now. Once we're finished with this. And there's lots of positive feedback for Alice and helping her understand what she's doing well can also help her to keep developing as well. So giving her feedback on what she's doing right, <clears throat> more sophisticated structure that she's using, the vocabulary, the organization, the engagement with a reader, authorial voice, okay? Improving vocabulary, it's a good suggestion. Good. So if you have any other questions about the either ECC or ECP, you can post them on the Q&A. I will try to respond to the last ones now. And there are a few other questions here. <clears throat> The last one with recommendations for feedback might be Paul, but the expectation was to see these different examples of proficiency uh, for ECP. We saw some for ECC um, earlier during the workshop, but to give you a chance to interact with them and, and interpret the rubrics and decide whether they are meeting the expectations for the specific level in this particular exam or not. Um, it was my intention was also to think about those as more like learning opportunities and giving more specific feedback to test takers, to your students, so they know specifically what to improve or what, what they need to keep polishing in some way. Even at the C2 level, there might be a lot of things that they can continue to develop, to improve, to 
polished more finely in some way. Vocabulary, especially at the for ECPE takers, is extremely important. It will be uh, critical for <clears throat> within the GCVR section, but also when they're using uh, their language, they, it has to be more advanced, more sophisticated when they're writing these formal proposals. There were a few questions. These are great suggestions, yes. Yeah, very good ideas. Yeah, there's something about infographics that's more the, the sources of information that are, are included as part of the prompt. Great, these are all great suggestions. Thank you. Those are good ideas, very specific. And then some final reflections, if you want to share any, let's see, to what extent the webinar helped you to have a better understanding of ECC and ECP writing sections, requirements, the um, a few ideas to implement with your students, um, more strategies to give them feedback. Do you have any particular students that you're going to talk to this week based on what we discussed today? So there are hopefully a few things that you can implement in, in your classes with your students and they will do better on, on their exams when they take them this year. <clears throat> there were a few questions as you're responding to this that I wanted to address um, about the prompts and the, let me check. using the, the sources, whether they need to be paraphrased or not, whether they need to be quoted directly, you can decide how to use them. It, it's fine if they are paraphrased, obviously. They, what is not good and what has happened in, in a few cases is that the test taker just uses that content as something that they are writing themselves. They have to quote that this is, they have to refer to the particular source and acknowledge this is somebody saying this or a survey. Uh, reporting on this, or they have to acknowledge this is part of a different source of information that is being integrated into their own uh, written response, and it's not something that they are saying themselves. That is wrong, and that will not be um, helping them. The way they do it, it whether they do use one or more, at least to meet the requirements for ECP writing, they have to use one of those sources. It can be paraphrased, it can be quoted directly, but um, most likely they will have to integrate it into the way they're um, reading their response and making sure that it's something that is contributing to that idea. And it's directly linked, supporting what you're explaining with that particular, um, how they're using that particular source has to have a purpose. It's not just like adding language to any paragraph. It has to be uh, consistent, relevant, to, to the idea that they're trying to elaborate on and develop. Um, is there anything else? Other responses? We don't have to make those. You can continue those, but I will um, we'll sh obviously look at all the feedback that you can provide on, on the website webinar and the um, um, information that we're sharing with you. In relation to the different um, writing tasks, the proposal, the article, or the essay, there might be, as I mentioned before, different formats. There is no kind of specific word limit that they have to aim at. Don't ask them to count the number of words. As we saw from the rubrics, it's really the quality of writing, the content that they are explaining, how they're organizing those ideas, how they're responding to that particular prompt. It's not how many words they use that will um, help them pass or kind of perform well on the test. 
it's important that they elaborate on that particular idea with providing sufficient details, uh, personal experience, enough examples to provide convincing arguments that this is my opinion and this these are all the reasons why I think this, it, if they can be in favor or against any of the topics that we're talking about, if they're not going to be pe penalized whether they agree with the principle or not, or the different uh, options that are provided, but they have to really provide sufficient information to respond to them. Um, there are different formats, as I mentioned, but there is no particular requirement in terms of what the proposal has to include, what the essay has to, how they're kind of formatting the different responses. Um, what else? There were other questions. There were some questions about using, describing the positive and negative sides of both sides in some way that is definitely possible if they have enough time to do that. That would definitely contribute to a more kind of better developed and, and better supported essay. But not all of them might be able to do that or have time to elaborate sufficient with sufficient amount of information and quality of details. <clears throat> so it's up to them. But whatever they, they approach, however they approach the, the task, they have to make sure that they're providing sufficient um, content to be convincing in those opinions, to make sure that they are using um, not just simple structures, language that is commonly used, but more sophisticated and advanced grammar and vocabulary that shows their level of proficiency in terms of the accuracy of the language and a proper use of the language at the C2 level or any kind of, to interact in any of these kind of more general or academic or professional contexts. Um, what else there were? Questions. If there are any other questions, last minute questions, make sure you include them here. <laughs> we, as I mentioned at the beginning, we will be sharing this the content of the, the slides through our um, resource newsletter. So make sure that you sign up for it. It's on our on our website, the preparation side. I. Uh, leaving blank lines in between paragraphs that's not necessary uh, it might be easier to identify the different paragraphs but it's not a requirement of the task in itself what else i see i think the majority of our questions were answered so if you have any more you know where to find us um info at michiganassessment.org uh you can find my my email on on our website as well so thank you for joining us today i hope you enjoy the rest of your saturday and wherever you are and anywhere in the world have a great day enjoy the rest of the day and all the best to your students on the next round of ecc or ecpe exams thank you so much <laughs>